Hay pocas cosas más perturbadoras que escuchar las confesiones de un asesino. Así que, desde el adolescente que abusó sexualmente del cadáver de su madre, hasta el hombre que planeaba comerse a una niña. Comenzamos. El 27 de marzo del 2014, Kevin Davis, de 18 años, asesinó brutalmente a su madre, Kimberly Hill. En una entrevista, él explicó que luego de pedirle permiso para suicidarse, se sorprendió de que ella estuviera de acuerdo. Aparentemente, debido a eso, la mató, y luego tuvo relaciones con su cadáver. En marzo del 2015, trabajadores de la corte llegaron a la casa de Mitchell Blair, de 35 años, para entregar una nota de desalojo, pero en su lugar descubrieron los cuerpos de dos niños metidos dentro de un congelador. Pronto se descubrió que se trataba de Stephen Barry, de 9 años, y su hermana, Stoney Blair, los hijos de Mitchell. Luego de un interrogatorio, ella afirmó que cuatro años antes, su hijo menor le dijo que Stephen había abusado de él. Cualquiera fuera el caso, Mitchell procedió a torturar a Stephen por las siguientes dos semanas, estrangulándolo con una correa y vertiendo agua hirviendo en sus genitales. Y como se esperaría, él sucumbió a sus heridas y fue puesto en el congelador. Nueve meses después, el hijo de Mitchell reveló que Stoney también había abusado de él y debido a esto, comenzó a no darle de comer, golpearla y torturarla, hasta que finalmente ella murió tiempo después. Can you talk me through the, the type of abuse that you had to suffer as a kid? You mean sexual abuse? If that's what happened? That definitely did happen to me. That's why I know exactly how I would have grew up. I told my mother what happened to me. And the only thing she said was, it's over with so what the you want me to do about it? What you mean what I want you to do? You get what I'm saying? So all I could do is go back and sit in my room and just sit there and look stupid. I'm a kid, and I'm just telling you what happened to me. You didn't do about it. And plus, I still had to see the person coming in and out of my house. You're still friends with that person. So do you believe that the, the violent person you went on to become is a, you were a product of your own childhood? I mean, everybody have choices, so I can't just blame all that on my mom because I'm still an adult. Maybe I should have tried hard to get over that, but anybody who knows me, that touching the kids, the molesters, that no, no. So yeah, that's the problem. And this is what can happen to a kid. When like that goes. And this is the part that really gets me I used to tell her, Rape is the worst thing you can do, just make you, I tell her all the time, they used to make me feel like I was nothing. It made me feel like I wasn't You turn around and you do that to my son, you knew exactly what she was doing to him. She knew exactly what the she was doing to him. So yeah, she, man, I don't care what anybody think. She had to go, period. Why did you take the decision to pile the bodies on top of each other in a freezer? What do you mean? Why did you do that? Well, I only had one deep freezer. I mean, take the decision to pile the bodies on top of each other. Where was she gonna go? But how did you conceivably sleep at night? I slept well. Of course, at first I cried. It was 
fucked up because I had to let go of all of that. I'm doing my best, Mitchell, to listen to what you're saying. However, I, I need to know that you also accept that you had a number of other options open to you other than the extreme violence with which you decided to act. What do you mean accept it? You had a number of other options. There were no other options. I, I'm not playing crazy. I wasn't in depression, none of that. It's no excuse for rape, period. According to police reports, you ordered your eldest daughter uh, to, to, to physically lift the body of, of, of one of your children. No, I didn't tell her to lift the body. Can you imagine? You're talking about no, talking, you want to talk about your surviving body. children though, Michelle? Uh, you didn't ever consider turning yourself in? If my son told me that he did not want me to go after what happened, with statement. After I killed Sunday, you really think I was about to turn myself in because of her? Hell no. 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 And you feel no remorse for that? I would kill him again. El 2 de diciembre del 2016, Liam McCasney y Preston Taylor, ambos de 19 años, asesinaron a su amiga de la infancia, Sarah Stern. Increíblemente, la confesión de Liam de este asesinato fue secretamente grabado por su ex amigo, Anthony Curry. Yeah, and dude. El 12 de abril del 2006, 
Jamie Rose Bolling, de 10 años, desapareció. Cinco días después, sus restos mutilados fueron encontrados en el apartamento de Kevin Ray Underwood, de 26 años. Kevin había estrangulado a Jamie hasta la muerte, además de haber abusado sexualmente de su cadáver. Luego se preparó para desmembrar su cuerpo, con la intención final de comer sus restos. Now, going back to um, the plan, you, uh, yeah, so, you had the handcuffs and the duct tape. Yeah, so what I was going to do is I was going to, uh, you know, like I said, yank them in there, strain them, and then, you know, the uh, after the sex, it would turn kind of violent. I'd start uh, kind of torturing them a little and stuff like that. Uh, How would you torture them? Uh, Sticking large objects in their anus, uh, causing them pain that way. The, 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 the uh, torture was kind of a late addition because at first I wanted the body to be pretty much unharmed. Because uh, what I was going to do after that then was, while they were still alive and gagged, I was going to uh, drape them over the bathtub and cut off their head. And uh, then hang them there and let the blood all drain out, too good and drained out. And I was going to keep the body around for a couple of days. I was going to set the head on my desk so it could, like, watch me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, keep the corpse in my bed, sleeping with it, having sex with it for a day or two. And then I was going to start butchering them and cooking them. And a uh, hacksaw to cut open the head to get to the brain because I wanted to eat the brain and the heart and some of the organs. I, you know, I had pretty much planned all along to probably get a kid, just mainly because they'd be easier to grab and easier to get rid of afterwards, smaller, and, you know, put up less in the fight, but... Did you find her attractive? Not really, no. She was kind of... Well, she, I don't know, she just had, like, she was almost bald. She had, like, really thin hair, really thinning hair, and, and you know, she was a little chubby, and, you know, just kind of wasn't my type, basically, uh, Now, when did you come up with Wednesday would be the day? Because of what I really wanted to do, I, you know, I kind of planned it for that day, but I mean, I've been planning it for like every day for like a month, pretty much. Uh, uh, on, on the first time she came home, before she went and changed clothes, you know, she stopped, she saw me stand there, and, you know, she was just like, oh, this is horrible. I had to, and I came home from school and realized I forgot my house keys at home and had to go back and get them. And, you know, she was just complaining about how hot she was. And anyway, she came downstairs and was still, you know, she's like, oh, there's nothing when it's this hot, nothing good, like a good, you know, ice glass of ice milk. And uh, she, you know, kind of chatted for a minute and then asked to come inside and see my rat again. And she just sat there on the floor uh, looking at my rat. And uh, I just kind of struggled with myself the whole time she was in there. And uh, it was a struggle between right and wrong. Yeah, uh, well, or kind of, yeah, both that and, you know, not wanting to get caught. But, but yeah, it was partly because, you know, uh, you know, I can't do this. I don't want to do it. But then, you know, yeah, I want to do this. And there's a little bit of fear, like, hey, if I do this, I might get caught. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, that was a large part of it, too. But um, I was like, you know, I better just knock her out, you know, knock her out and, you know, then restrain her while she's unconscious. And finally, I was just, you know, look, either do it or tell her to get the hell out of the apartment, you know. Uh, and finally, I did it. And, you know, as soon as I hit her. What did she say when you hit her? That's something that's, you know, haunted me ever since it happened. Uh, she started yelling, I'm sorry. Which, you know, I'm just like, you know, what is she sorry for? She didn't do anything wrong. It's me, you know, I'm the one that should be sorry. She yeah, she, uh, like I said, she jumped, she was yelling, uh, God, I'm sorry, and, you know, uh, you know, let me go, I won't tell. And, you know, I mean, after I hit her a couple times, I finally just had to, you know, jump up and grab her, and she was, I couldn't believe how strong she was, I barely held her down. Uh, I mean, we flopped around, I've got pretty bad carpet burns on my knees from it. You know, I mean, we struggled, it, it took me probably 15, 20 minutes to kill her. Uh, then finally, when she was... I was pretty sure she was dead again. I uh, jumped up and grabbed the duct tape and put it over her mouth and nose because I was getting tired. My arms were getting sore from clamping down on her. And so I was going to drag her in there to the living room, but she, 
you know, big for age uh, papers. And she's like 110 pounds. And I was having a hard time, you know, flopping her over and rolling her around and dragging her around. Uh, and so I was like, well, it's a lot closer. And I don't want, you know, she's already been dead maybe 15, 10, 15 minutes. And so I don't want the blood to get all coagulated. So I'm just going to go ahead and drag her into the tub and behead her and then have sex with her body. I was pretty much exhausted by then. And... I decided that, uh, so I went to try to get rid of the body, but that it was still bleeding too much, and the uh, stomach contents were pouring out of the neck, and uh, so I was like, well, I'm going to let it sit here for a few hours and coagulate some more, so maybe I can move it without it you know, bleeding everywhere so much. So I just kind of went about my business with this. I closed the door because sick, you know, sick to my stomach that I'm doing this. I didn't even want to, yeah, just sat there at the computer for a couple hours, you know, talking to her. I wasn't talking much because, you know, I was... Well, then about that same time, you know, I, I was also, I was talking to her, but I was also occasionally stepping outside, you know, helping them look for the girl. And then, you know, like I said, I was stepping out there occasionally, acting, you know, uh, talking to the manager and all that and stuff and, you know, oh, I hope they find her soon. It's horrible. You know, just kind of setting up and making myself look concerned. And then, you know, I went inside and finally finished uh, cleaning up the body.